Everything comes from somewhere. It's a statement so preposterously obvious that it's rarely worth even making. And yet the implications of it are rarely explored. Where do you come from? Finding the precise time and place that humans began is no easy feat, and it's the same for most life forms. But there are some things we can trace back with a fair degree of accuracy, often with surprising results. Number 10. Modern cattle can be traced back to one herd about 11,000 years ago. The average American eats 55 pounds of beef per year, so there's a lot of love for cow meat there. Our ancient ancestors never had that pleasure, because while there were herds of animals like Oryx back in the day, the modern cow as we know it never existed in the wild. We can actually trace our current worldwide cattle family back to a herd of 81 female animals that were bred nearly 11,000 years ago. Researchers from across Europe analyzed DNA samples from living cattle, as well as from DNA extracted from bones taken from archaeological sites that date back to the beginning of farming as we know it. The differences in genetics seen in modern cattle could only exist if the original herd was limited to a size of about 80 animals, which descended from the ancient oryx, which are always kind of similar to a modern cow, but not exactly the same thing, and certainly much bigger and wilder. Number 9. Domesticated hamsters all trace back to one pair in Syria. A lot of attention is paid to the domestication of both cats and dogs, the two most common house pets in the world. Most of us know that dogs were domesticated long ago from wolves, and cats seem to have domesticated themselves alongside mankind as an almost strategic move that ensured food and shelter. But humans do keep a lot of other animals as pets, like hamsters for instance. A wild hamster is probably not something most of us have ever come across, but they do exist, and the modern domesticated hamster can be traced back to a specific breeding pair from Syria. Their story is a curious and remarkable one. Jewish biologists Israel Aharoni made it his mission to identify the animals listed in the Torah. The problem was the animals didn't have names, just very vague descriptions. And one animal that he had a special interest in had a name that translated to English as Mr. Saddlebags. The only description of it stated was that it was golden, so it's not a lot to go on. In 1930, Aharoni traveled to Syria and hired a hunter. They traveled the countryside looking for clues and then, on a farm, dug a hole and discovered a nest of small golden animals. He had discovered hamsters. Mr. Saddlebags. Aharoni took the hamsters, and things quickly spiraled out of control. The mother ate several babies, a handful more escaped and were never found, but one pair of siblings bred, as hamsters tend to do. They became the Adam and Eve of the modern hamster world. That pair had 150 babies. They were transported to labs around the world and continued to breed. Today, if you see a hamster in a pet store anywhere in the world, it's almost guaranteed to be a descendant of that single breeding pair. Number 8. White mushrooms can be traced to a Pennsylvania farm in 1925. If you go to the grocery store looking for mushrooms right now, you'll probably have a small handful of options, depending on how much variety your store has. But if they sell fresh mushrooms at all, then they're going to be those white mushrooms, sometimes called table or button mushrooms. They're probably the most common type in the Western world, and they can all be traced back to a single Pennsylvania farm in the year 1925. Prior to 1925, mushrooms were chiefly brown. Your local store may sell brown cremini mushrooms next to white button mushrooms today, and they look identical, except for the color. That's because they basically are. Lord Ferdinand Lambert was growing brown mushrooms at Keystone Mushroom Farm when he discovered a white one in the mix. It was a mutation, just a random chance. He was an amateur mushroom scientist in the making, so he took that one back to his lab and cultivated the spores. The white mushrooms grew faster and more uniform in size and shape. By 1933, it was the leading mushroom crop in the country, and soon tens of millions of pounds were being produced each year. Customers were more attracted to the color and shape, and it's still the most popular mushroom today, all thanks to one little mutant in 1925. Number 7. 200 million rabbits in Australia came from just a handful in the 1800s. Australia is home to a wild rabbit population of around 200 million. Is that a lot of rabbits for a country the size of Australia? Well, definitely, when you consider it's not supposed to have any. As one of the many invasive species that has caused problems down under, rabbits were never meant to be there in the first place. Those 200 million all come from a handful that were released in the year 1859. Though the animals had been on the continent as early as 1788, it's believed that either 13 or 24 of them were let loose in 1859 from the farm of settler Thomas Austin. He had let the animals run in his yard and may have set them free for hunting. Obviously, he didn't manage to hunt them all. Australians have been fighting a losing battle against rabbits ever since. In the late 1800s, they were killing 2 million per year getting nowhere. Most famously, they tried to erect a rabbit-proof fence across the entire country, which is effective against larger animals, but did not work on the rabbits. They were already on the far side of the fence before construction was finished. Number 6. Golden Retrievers come from two dogs named Naus and Bell. 
According to the American Kennel Club, the Golden Retriever was the third most popular dog breed in America in 2021. It's consistently in the top 10 breeds. They're lovable, a bit goofy, and they seem to make good family dogs. The entire breed can also be traced back to two specific dogs named Naus and Bell in the year 1868. A Scotsman named Sir Dudley Cords Majora Banks was the owner of the first of the breed, the dog named Naus, who was said to be a yellow retriever of some kind. The original story was that Naus was a Russian circus dog, but there's no evidence of that being true. The real story seems to be that he was just out walking one day, saw the dog, and bought it off a cobbler. Sir Dudley, as a breeder, kept detailed breeding logs. The records are still available today, which show that he bred the dog with another named Bell, a tweed water spaniel, in 1868, and they had a litter of four puppies. The resulting mix of retriever and water spaniel made a light-coated sporting dog that clearly struck a chord with many people. Number 5. South Dakota's mountain goats came from six escaped Canadian goats. Mountain goats, more properly known as Rocky Mountain goats, can be found across Western Canada and the United States. Their population estimate is somewhere between 75 and 100,000. The ones found in the Black Hills can all be traced back to six goats from Canada. They were gifted to Custer State Park back in 1924, but goats being goats, they were not content to stay in their pens. The six goats escaped and made their way into the wild, where they took up residence in the Granite Mountains. Their number is up to over 200 today, with no sign of slowing down anytime soon. Number 4. A majority of macadamia trees can be traced to one Australian tree. Hawaii is famous for a lot of things, from beautiful beaches to the luau. Macadamia nuts are also huge in the state, with 40 million pounds being produced in 2019. While the bulk of macadamia nuts in the world come from Australia and South Africa, their origins are not so diverse. 70% of all the macadamia nuts in the world can be traced to one single tree in Australia. Biodiversity in plants is a big deal. The lack of diversity in bananas caused an entire strain of them to die out once already, so this field is of great interest to scientists. When trying to trace the origins of macadamia trees, they tested samples from farmed trees in Hawaii and wild ones in Australia, and found they all linked back to a very small population on a private island called Malo. The genetic differences between the trees were so small that they believe they all probably descended from the same individual tree. Number 3. Most thoroughbreds can be traced to the Dali Arabian. When a horse proves itself on the racetrack, it often gets retired to life as a stud, where breeders try to continue and improve upon its genetic line. No horse seems to have done a better job of that than Dali Arabian. There are 500,000 thoroughbred horses in the world. Thoroughbred, which is sometimes used as a synonym for purebred, is more properly a distinctive breed of racehorse. These are typically considered the best racehorses in the world, and nearly all half million can trace their lineage back to 28 specific horses. And among these, 95% of all males can be traced back to one specific stallion, the Dali Arabian. Thomas Dali was said to have purchased or maybe stolen the colt from a sheik in Syria. The horse's name was Manic or Manica. Many famous horses were sired by the Arabian back in England, and it said the horse lived to be 30, which is a pretty advanced age for a horse. Number 2. Almost 150,000 Faroese people are all descended from one guy. The Faroe Islands are located in the North Atlantic Ocean near Iceland. There are about 158,000 people who live or have lived there, and a stunning 149,000 of them can all trace their lineage back to the same man. So the family reunions must be pretty epic. The prolific ancestor of most of the Faroese islanders is known as Clemen Legason Follerup. Back in the 17th century, he had 23 children. That turned into 66 grandchildren across 27 villages. Back in 2006, the people of the island were registered in something called the Genetic Biobank, a sort of national registry of genetics for the Faroese people. The computer program kept reading errors because everyone it registered turned out to be a cousin of everyone else. Number one, blue-eyed people can be traced to one ancestor. Blue eyes are the second most common eye color in the world, though only about 10% of people have them. The color itself is a genetic mutation, and scientists have traced it all the way back to a single common ancestor that lived between 6,000 and 10,000 years ago. Back then, there were only brown-eyed people. Mutation in a specific gene that governs eye color occurred in one individual and was passed down through the generations to the 10% of blue-eyed people who exist today. The gene mutation worked in a way that switched off the brown allele for the affected individual and their ancestors. Basically, the option for brown eyes was removed because the body's ability to produce melanin is reduced due to the mutation. That means brown eyes can't fully form, and you get blue eyes instead. There's no genetic advantage to the mutation, but there's no disadvantage either, and it seems to be one of those random chance things that just can pop up in nature.